it's just magnificent suckery and I just oh it's the suck that champions are made of hi everyone it's Kendo here if you're new around here welcome if you're not new around here what is up home skillet biscuit and happy Saturday today is another episode or the second episode of bad movies in a beat, where I review bad movies and do my makeup. Last week was our first episode, and you guys seem to really like it, so. Or y'all just like ripping on Tall Girl, which is cool. Either way, what's up, what's good, how you doing? I've, I think I've pretty much officially decided that this is gonna be a thing I do every Saturday because I have a lot of material to work with, so be sure to subscribe so that you can see me at least every Saturday, but I upload on Tuesdays and Saturdays, so I'd like to see you both times. Just saying, love to see you again but today i wanted to talk about a classic i felt like if we're gonna discuss bad movies i need to really get around to watching one of perhaps one of the most iconic bad movies ever made a film so bad that you're not even sure why there's so many people on set contributing to it a film that you're not even sure is a real film until you realize that there's a rumor that about five million dollars was contributed in funding this garbage. I love it. The sheer fact that this movie exists at all is nothing short of inconceivable, just truly. The very word of it's so bad, it's good cinematography. Capstone of suckery, the citizen cane of shit. That is the room. I knew I wanted to do the room pretty early in this series because I had never seen it. I know, crazy. I consider myself a lover of bad movies and I have never seen The Room. So The Room is a movie that is starred in, directed by, produced by, and written by Tommy Wiseau. Hi Herbert. Say hi to Herbert the Fly. He's still here. Accidental comedic gold. It's just good. But it is also incredibly confusing and infuriating at many parts. I figured probably differently than how I did tall girls that I'm gonna go scene by scene or as much as much as physically possible because this movie is disjointed and makes no sense in general so going scene by scene I don't know how much more connected I can make it by doing that but I'm going to try. <laughs> so the main protagonist is a dude named Johnny. Johnny is a bank worker. At one point computers are mentioned as well but I, I don't know. If I had to describe Johnny aesthetically, I always pictured him as being kind of like a mixture of Chris Angel and The Undertaker if they had a love child with a chronic inner ear infection. Now within the first scene, I was, I was thoroughly confused because I was like, wait a second, is this a foreign film? Cause like Johnny comes in, he says his first lines, right? And like his mouth and the words don't, don't match. <laughs> so what is it? It's just a little something. <laughs> Was this just like really bad dubbing? Was it originally made in Italian? Nope. This is, this is just the film. Oh, and the moment I realized that I was like, oh bitch, we in for a good one. So the first scene is Johnny giving his fiance Lisa a red dress and she tries it on. And that was the first example of like these really weird kind of disjointed dialogue situations in this scene and every scene, honestly, but this is just setting you up really is so disjointed. Isn't it fabulous? I would do anything for my girl. Huh? Isn't it fabulous? I would do anything for my girl. Right? It's like, it's something just a little to the left of where it was supposed to be. These are the beginnings of two different conversations. Like y'all were both talking to two different people, but some reason y'all put these two lines together. Honestly, kind of mild word salad-y. Like maybe not straight up salad, maybe tapas. Word puns on, I don't know. <laughs> not to mention throughout the movie, Tommy always looks and sounds a little bit drunk. Oh, hi, Denny. In walks Denny, the fourth most useless person in this movie. Denny is their next door neighbor. And it's not very well set up what the point of Denny was. Like he ends up having like 8 million story arcs during the movie that all are completely inconsequential to the rest of the story. Denny comes inside and is quickly left behind by the couple who want to get in a little bit of old fashioned pre-coitus pillow fighting. But Denny interrupts them and does this really uncomfortable <laughs> joke joke quote unquote i just like to watch you guys and then lisa responds like like this oh denny 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 boy <laughs> now this movie is really big on inappropriate reactions to conversation especially like serious conversation because <laughs> it's later revealed that denny's supposed to be like a makeshift adopted son of johnny johnny supposedly bought an apartment for him to stay in after his 18th birthday meaning he's a grown man 
like in your room giving you a predator smile and saying i just like to watch you guys and y'all just i'll just give him a slap on the wrist okay i mean in fairness if i sit here and nitpick everything wrong with this movie we will be here forever so i'm gonna just keep going Danny leaves when they basically say they're about to get busy you know cue the early 2000s cinemax softcore porno music that i know nothing about because i didn't watch that type of things as a child i am a child of god <coughs> But seriously, this is one of the weirdest sex scenes I've ever seen in my life. Like, I can't show it, I don't think, because I don't feel like getting demonetized, but like, there's a, like, there's, they're, they're doing the proverbial downward dog, if you will. It's kind of like what I would imagine alien simulations would think sex looks like, because he's really high on her body. Like, it's like he's putting it in her belly button. So they have a, the sex, right? Is my foundation ever the right color? Y'all should know already, it's only the second episode. So the next day, Lisa's mom comes over, right? And out of the freaking blue, Lisa's like, I don't love him anymore. I don't want to be with him anymore. He's he's boring. She looked happy enough during their sex scene. That's the best acting she's ever done then. So the mom is like, no, you should stay with him because he's a secure man. He has a nice job. He's going to get that promotion at the bank. Stick it out, basically. But like I said, all of a sudden, Lisa isn't about that life. She wants to be with Mark, who... <laughs> who throughout the film never ceases to let us know that he is Johnny's best friend. Johnny's my best friend. Johnny's my best friend. He's your best friend. But yeah, she calls on Mark and she's like, hey baby, what you up to? Which was really confusing. The reason it was confusing to me is because it wasn't confusing to Mark. Cause apparently this is the first time she's made her move on Mark, right? Like they don't have a sexual relationship until later, spoiler alert they're going to be in an affair. This movie is garbage, so it doesn't matter. But his response in good old the room fashion is incredibly weird. It doesn't make sense. They have this weird back and forth where he's trying to get off the phone and Lisa's like, no, I want to talk right now. Look, we'll talk about it later. I told you I'm very busy. We'll talk about it now. I can't wait till later. I want to talk right now. Okay, all right, what do you want to talk about? And again, they ain't been, they ain't been smacking cheeks, so I don't understand why she feels so comfortable. <laughs> to do that and he's not like oh this is strange <laughs> your friend's fiance calls you and she's like hey baby i want to talk to you now and you're just like <laughs> oh lisa the jokester so lisa and mark meet up right she goes to put the moves on him right she wore a nice sexy dress and for some reason when she starts pouring wine is when he realizes hey maybe she wants to clap dim cheeks again not the time that she called him at night said baby said, hey, don't you hang up that phone there. I mean, it is possible that they were having a sexual relation before this, but the problem is he's like super surprised that she's trying to put the moves on him. So obviously this hasn't happened before. Ah, uh, whatever. Anyway, she makes her move, he takes the hint, and they get down and do the ancient body boogie. Cue the early 2000s Cinemax softcore porno music that I don't know what it sounds like because I was a good girl. <laughs> Okay, in the next scene, Johnny goes to the flower shop to pick up flowers for Lisa. I don't even know what to say about the scene. I'm just gonna let it play because it, it's iconic for all the best reasons. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Ah, it's so bad. So Johnny comes home and she's like, hey, did you get that promotion you were talking about? And he's like, nah, which... Again, the subsequent lines don't make sense if that was the conversation that happened literally three seconds before. Did you get your promotion? Nah. You didn't get it, did you? Johnny then goes on this rant about how the bank uses all of his ideas but doesn't want to give him a promotion. The dialogue is completely jumbled and confusing. At least you have friends. I didn't get any calls today. You're right. The computer business is too competitive. Do you want me to order a pizza? Lisa then tells Johnny that he needs to have a drink so he can decompress, but Johnny doesn't drink. But they have a night of drunken fun, complete with obligatory tie head wraps. Side note, have you ever seen somebody drunk do that? <laughs> like, I never have. I, I, I'm so confused by that. But anyway, I've seen a few people talk, say that's what people do, and I was like, whoo. But yeah, complete with the tie thing and tripping over nothing. And of course, the clapping of dim cheeks. Now, if you're counting at home, we are now at the third sex scene. We're about 30 minutes into the film. This is when I started to wonder, wait a second, is this, 
is this a legitimate like softcore porn? Because that would be a good troll. Also, if you're counting at home, this is my third concealer I am putting on my face. So Lisa's mom comes over and says that she has breast cancer. We get nothing but vapid emotionlessness and inappropriate responses. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. Not a, oh my God, mom, are you okay? What is treatment looking like? What are your chances? Do you need anything? Nope, we get this. Look, don't worry about it. Everything will be fine. They're curing lots of people every day. I'm just gonna assume you don't like the bitch. But as far as inappropriate responses go, this conversation is a twofer. Not only do we have a discovery of cancer, but we also have a little smidget of domestic abuse. And of course, inappropriately handled. And he got drunk last night. And he hit me. Johnny doesn't drink. Now the audience knows that Johnny didn't hit her, right? But her mama act like she know too. She might as well hit her with a, I know you lie. Even if you think she lying, you don't ask no questions. You don't want no follow up. You don't show no concern. Like they just like, yep, cancer. Yep, abuse. Moving right along. Now I know it seems impossible, but the next few scenes are even more disjointed than the ones that we've watched so far. Because in walks these two hosts. We don't know who they are, how they got here. Why are they just going in their house like that? Nothing. We don't know nothing, but they just start smashing. When we do finally get a name for these two bozos, this is how they introduce them. This is Michelle's boyfriend, Mike. <laughs> she said, this is Michelle's boyfriend, as if we know who the hell Michelle is. <laughs> we don't know who the hell Michelle is, let alone who her boyfriend is, let alone that his name is Mike. But it doesn't matter because these two are pointless to the story. Well, Michelle has more of a point, kind of, but Mike? Pointless. They have no development, no story arc. They're not a song chess. Just nothing but wasted screen time. Okay, next scene. Danny gets cornered on a roof by like a drug man, drug dude. Drug dealer is what I was probably going for. Okay. And the drug dude is like, hey, yo, you owe me money, right? And Danny's like, it's coming. It'll be here in a few minutes, which I feel like is an adequate answer to that question. But granted, I'm not doing drug deals. So maybe they are a little pressed for time. I don't know. But he pulls a gun out on Danny. Johnny and Mark just happen to be going to the roof apparently because they stop him from shooting Danny. I don't even really know how to comment on this scene. It was so bad that it's like, I don't even know what to say. Also, also this entire arc, like all the arcs with Danny is never return to like we don't find out this story arc but we got like eight scenes of them playing football <laughs> skipping ahead we have one of the more iconic scenes from the movie did not hit her it's not true it's bullshit i did not hit her i did not oh hi mark again in good old the room fashion johnny's talking to mark about how lisa's saying that he hit her did you no, it's not true. Don't even ask. And that's it. There's no there's no more conversation of this at all. No explanation on how Johnny knows that Lisa's saying this to people. Did him and Lisa have a conversation or did he just find out from other people? We will never know. Because the thing that's more important right now is Mark's question about if women have the capacity to cheat. Again, more inappropriate responses to serious topics. I used to know a girl. She had a dozen guys. One of them found out about it, beat her up so bad she ended up in a hospital on Guerrero Street. <laughs> what a story, Mark. I'm truly curious if on set they were actually saying different words on set and just like, it don't make sense. At this point, I'm watching this movie and getting frustrated. I was like, how did so many people work on this film to the extent that it's like, I bought it on Amazon. Like, how did he even get to that point? While Johnny's still on the roof, Denny comes up to visit. They play football. Every conversation is, is punctuated with a football game. That simulator knows that the American people like to throw a ball. And Denny tells Johnny that he's in love with his fiance, Lisa, for some reason. I mean, not that Lisa's unlikable any more than the rest of the people in this movie. Why would you tell Johnny? Her fiance? Oh, Denny. Again, they're trying to act like this dude is a child. Like this is a grown man, complete with pedal haircut. But guess what? It doesn't freaking matter because this arc two is never returned to. Denny's been on drugs, was a lost child. He's in love with his adopted father's fiance and nothing comes of it. Like if we really combine all the moments that Denny is on screen, he's on there for a good 20 minutes and it doesn't matter. 
if you haven't noticed, I freaking hate Denny. Denny's a stupid character, stupid. Like, the whole thing's stupid. But, like, of the stupidest, he's almost the most stupid. We'll get to him later. Oh, also, mid-conversation, apparently Danny's dating some chick named Elizabeth that we never see. We never meet. Apparently he was already dating her. So mid conversation, he's like, yeah, we're gonna get married. I love her. What about Elizabeth, huh? I love her. When I graduate from college, get a good job, I wanna marry her and have kids with her. The Nick, what, what do we ha what? <sighs> anyway, Lisa's talking to, who the hell is that again? Michelle, the chick, the chick that was pointlessly having sex in their apartment, just. Apparently that's a friend of hers, I guess. I don't know. What kind of friends you got? But Lisa tells Michelle that that he got drunk and that he hit her. And hallelujah, this is where we get the first appropriate response to that information. <laughs> he hit you? Are you okay? But don't get too comfortable! Because it's is still the room, which never fails at forgetting the important points of a conversation. Well, I don't want to marry him anymore. What? Lisa tells Michelle that she's having an affair with Mark and she's like, you should tell Johnny that you're having an affair. Which doesn't seem like a good idea, right? If he just, if he just hit her. Anywho, Johnny comes home and him and Lisa get in an argument. And this is where my personal favorite line of the movie comes in. Good old, you are tearing me apart, Lisa. Oh God, it's just, it's, it's so, Mwah. It's just magnificent suckery and I just, oh, it's the suck that champions are made of. Next few scenes are more football, falling over nothing, recapping of scenes that the audience have already seen in detail. Lisa's mom and Lisa meet up again and she tells her mom that she had sex with someone else. And Johnny overhears it and he's like, oh yeah, yeah. He decides to record her for some reason as opposed to just confronting her. Cause he just he just he just overheard their conversation about her sleeping with someone else would have been an adequate enough time to just say hey i i heard that conversation just come down the stairs and say hey i heard that conversation but he wants to be a super sleuth for something he already knows <laughs> but he said i'm a recorder and then the audience have the joy of just watching him set up the recording equipment for the next like minute and a half we can never finish that denny arc any of them but we need to see him set up a tape recorder in detail by the way we're like an hour in and we're meeting new people still this is peter peter is a psychologist and a friend of johnny and johnny tells peter that lisa is cheating on him now peter doesn't want to give advice so he gives advice. If you want to, you should confront her. But Johnny doesn't want to confront her because love is blind. You know what they say, love is blind. Which, okay, now I'm just nitpicking because there's so many bigger problems with this movie, but people blinded by love don't usually say, I'm blinded by love. <laughs> so, isn't the point of being blinded by love that you don't know that everything's going wrong and, and you're blinded? You're blinded by love. Anyway, Mark comes over again because Mark has no other talking points. Apparently they're talking about women. More hilariously disjointed conversation flow. Lisa's teasing me about whether we are going to get married or not. And I don't know what to do. Yeah, I'm thinking of moving to a bigger place, man. I'm making some good money. I know I said I'm going scene by scene, but I'm really not. There's so many scenes that I had to skip just for the sake of continuity. Continuity that does not actually exist within the film. So Mark and Peter are talking on the roof because everything happens on the roof. Good old fashioned CGI city landscape. Mark and Peter are on the roof get in an argument and Peter's like, you're having an affair with, oh girl, Lisa, right? This dude walked into the movie 45 minutes in and for whatever reason, he's the most observant person yet. Mark goes off the deep end apparently and tries to very half-heartedly push Peter off the roof. But it ends with Peter just being like, hey, don't, don't be with her because you're ruining the friendship, dude. Stop it, no. The next few scenes are more of what I've at, at this point started to deem as for some reason scenes. Mark shaves his face and that's significant for some reason. They play football again and Peter falls for some reason. Johnny and Mark go to a coffee shop but we have to hear the two people's order before them for some reason, as well as their order. And then this conversation happens for some reason? What client? I cannot tell you, it's confidential. Oh, come on, why not? No, I can't. Anyway, how is your sex life? I'm telling you, this conversation flow. The Wattpad community is quaking. Anyway, fast forward, Johnny's having a birthday party, I think. A party of some sort, I'm almost positive it was a birthday party. And Lisa and Mark start making out at this party. 
which subsequently results in them being caught by this dude. Now, a lot of things have made me mad while watching this movie. This is the only part that made me kind of just want to throw the rest of it. But I gotten so far at this point. This was the only part that got me legitimately angry. Who is this dude? Why of all people are they being caught by this nameless dude? At first I was like, is that Peter? Did I just forget what he looks like? He is pretty not important. No, this is random number one. Johnny doesn't catch him. Denny doesn't catch him. Them other people didn't catch him. So Johnny announces at this party that Lisa is pregnant. This immediately worries Michelle and random dude because of course his opinion matters. Guess what? Lisa's not even pregnant. She just told him that because quote, I told him that to make it interesting. Cool, noted. This is stupid. It's gonna shake up our group of friends. I feel like I'm sitting on an atomic bomb waiting for it to go off. Nick, who are you? Nobody gets a flying ball sack how you feel, you're new. By the way, we never get a name for this dude. He's just random Caucasian male, shade 305. So at the party, Mark, asks Lisa if the baby is his, which is a valid question. Uh, they get into an argument for some reason and she slaps him in the middle of the party. So that's very inconspicuous, which is cool. Then Johnny and Mark start to fight and it is the quickest fight and makeup scene I've ever seen. It's literally like three seconds. After they make up, Lisa and Mark are like dry humping in the middle of the living room and no one finds this strange apparently but Johnny like no one's looking at them no one noticed so Mark and Johnny start fighting again uh longer this time so progress that effectively ends the party and Johnny goes upstairs and for presumably quite a long time he locks himself in their bedroom uh their bathroom rather so during this time Lisa just calls her new dude up and she's like hey I want to be with you and Mark is all like yeah this is the final straw for Johnny. He's had enough. So he confronts Lisa with his tape recordings now for some reason, as opposed to literally any other time. Again, this scene gives me one of my favorite lines of the movie. Don't you do this to me. I gave you seven years of my life. <laughs> The first time I heard that, I thought my left earphone went out. I really did. I was like, why is voice go lowercase like that? That is so weird. So anyway, final scene, Lisa's leaving him. And Johnny has like a very low energy <laughs> destroying the house scene. Like the whole scene looks like it was supposed to be done in slow motion, but they couldn't figure out how to edit it like that. So he just did it very slowly. Anyway, John shoots himself. And that's the end or it should have been. They have a whole scene where Lisa and Mark discover John dead. Lisa's like, oh no, he did. But like, what about you and me, Lee? And Mark is like, no, he was my best friend and you killed him. And then Danny comes in. There we go, that, that's the end of the movie. Now as bad and downright frustrating as this movie is, it truly does stand the test of time so far as being arguably the worst movie I've ever seen. Funny enough, the movie is so bad that it ended up garnering its own cult following for being so bad. And quite the ironic turn of events, a movie about the film and Tommy Wiseau called The Disaster Artist that came out in 2017 starring James and the other Franco, whatever his name is. Ironically, that film that depicted the making of The Room was very well received. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was nominated for an Academy Award the irony of it all. I didn't watch the entirety of that movie, but I will say what part I did watch. Uh, <laughs> James Franco really did hit the nail on the head with his depiction of Tommy. It was actually kind of terrifying. <laughs> I'm debating whether or not I want a gloss. Yeah. I don't regret that. So that's all for today, folks. If you've seen The Room and you have any opinions, I'd love to hear yours on it, what your favorite part is, what the worst part is. There's there's so many. Then don't forget to comment that down below. If you didn't see last week's video, that'll be linked above and below. Herbert, mommy's working. Don't forget to follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are KennyJD, and I will see you guys next time.